Okay, so in this uh, example, what I want to do is walk through how to issue an HTTP POST request. So I've, what I've got here is the MP0, uh, the starter code, actually, just so I don't accidentally show you any solution code. Um, and what I want to do is talk a little bit about how clients and servers exchange information. So up until this point, let's look at our server, let's look at our client. Um, so this is the, the starter client, and you can see this get summary method that we provided. But what this get summary method actually does is it issues a get request. Get requests are used to request information from a, uh, from a web server. That web server might hand you back HTML or might hand you back JSON. But a get request says, the client is saying, send me some data. Get requests are used frequently on the web. In fact, most of the requests that your browser issues are get requests. When you go to a website, it's, you know, go to Reddit, it says, tell me everything that's, you know, on the front page of, uh, you know, the Illinois Reddit today. And it sends you back some information and your browser displays that. Um, post, in contrast, is used when we want to send some information to the server. Um, and in this part of the MP, you'll need to be able to do that. And so what I'm going to show you how to do is kind of get that set up. I'm going to do this at a different path and with some different, um, you know, data than, than you'll actually need to use to complete the MP, but I think this will give you enough to get started. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, make use of the test suites in order to do some experimentation. So you might have thought in the past, well, let's say I want to mess around with some code a little bit. You know, it seems like it's a lot of trouble to actually do this by running the app. You have to run the emulator, it's a little bit slow. I might have to add a button to get something to work. It's hard to see data and things like that. Um, a better way to do that is actually to use the test suites as a driver for your application to allow you to experiment. So we're gonna see how to do that as well. All right, so I'm gonna add, this is again, this is the MP0 test suites. You could add these in the MP2 test suites or the MP1 test suites if you want, doesn't really matter. Um, I'm gonna add a test. Uh, and I'm gonna, and, and to do that, I use this test annotation. Uh, this is what identifies uh, the, um, the, the method as a test to the test harness. At that point, I can run this using this little uh, arrow over here. Um, and once that happens, you'll see that it's also up here now in my run configurations, which is great. And it's gonna, now I've added this down to the integration test area. That's where you wanna put it because it requires the server be started and stuff like that and certain things that the integration tests will do for you. Uh, and so you'll see that this succeeded because it didn't do anything, right? So, so now let's start adding some code. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of quickly just go through uh, the process of adding a get, a new get route. I'm gonna include uh, a callback. I'm gonna include the client side code and I'll include the server side code. And we'll just kind of do this rapidly because what we really wanna do is experiment with post, but we'll get a get request to work first. Okay, so let's go back to the start of the server. Um, I've got this get summary method, right? And I'm gonna call uh, this, um, uh, I'm gonna call this uh, test post uh, for now. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna return, have this return an empty, uh, an okay response, but an empty one. Um, then I need to actually add support for this into my, um, into my dispatch table. And I'm gonna set this up uh, at the route test. So uh, when I get a test, I'll call uh, test post and that'll return this. And I'm gonna need that request. So let's pass that to and let's set up test post to, to handle it. So test post will expect to receive a um, non-null final recorded request. request. Okay. Um, good. So now I've got my server-side support for this new route. You'll notice this route has no parameters, like the previous ones where the semester and the year. That's okay. This is just for testing. Let's go to the client. Okay. Uh, now in the client, I have a couple things I need to do. I need to add a new callback. So we'll call this uh, test post. And this doesn't need to return anything yet. Um, I also need to add a new uh, method. And for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a... Um, I'm going to be making a get request, so I can um, I can test just just copy this. I'm still going to need those callbacks. Um, the URL that I just set up is called test, right? It didn't have any parameters, and there's no parameters past this method. Um, and then in the callback, what I'll do is I'll just call, and I can actually do this right here. Call callbacks dot 
test post. And there's no information I need to provide to that. So, so that's all going to work. Okay. So how do I actually get this to run from my testing harness? Uh, oops, no, that's fine. Um, so the first thing I need is a client. So I'm going to say client, client is equal to client dot start. Uh, because I'm in the integration test area, uh, this will take care of starting the server for me. So I know the server is going to be up. And then now some of you may have noticed in some of our previous examples, this use of something called a completable future. And I'm going to use one here. The completable future exists to allow me to wait for a callback. So if I just made this request, what would happen is the test would finish before the callback was actually fired. And so I actually need the test to wait for the callback to complete because I probably want to examine some of the information that's provided by the callback. The way to do this, or one way, is to use this uh, built-in Java feature called a completable future. So I'm going to say uh, completable future. Um, and in this case, I'll have it return a string. We're going to see why in a second. Um, and I'll say uh, first string and uh, say new completable future. Um, so this is a completable future that allows me to wait for something that's going to return a string as a result. Next, what I'll do is I'll make um, this. I need to pass some callbacks. So I'll say new course client callbacks. It's going to ask me which ones I want to implement. I'll say this. Then I'm going to say first string dot complete and I'll pass back just the empty string as a value. Now I'll say uh, assert that. And, and here's what's actually going to wait. So now when I call first string dot get um, is equal to the empty string. You'll see that get can throw some exceptions. I'll just add them to the method signature. Okay. So now what I've got is some code that's actually going to run this new client method that I created and actually make the server request. Okay, so yes, it's gonna take a minute just to boot up. But again, one of the nice things about this approach is I don't have to touch the emulator. I don't need to, you know, nothing really, uh, I don't have to, I can just, you know, repeat things by, you know, clicking on the play button or, or hitting control R or whatever it is that just reruns the test without having to like interact with the emulator, which is a much, much better way of doing things. Okay, so now I've got my get request working. I've got my uh, test code waiting for things to be finished. Uh, and now, so let's not change this to post. So, First thing is, how do we do that? Well, let's look at the client again. Right here in the uh, client, when I set up this string request, I tell Volley, which is Android's networking library, I want to do a get request. And so I'm going to change this to post. At first, nothing's going to change. Uh, you know, I'll, I'm rerunning the test. You're going to see it's going to pass just fine. Um, now, let's start to see a little bit of uh, what's going to be different on the server. So the first thing to note is that the server knows what type of request the client is making. So I'm going to print off here. If I look at this request object that I'm getting, it has a get method uh, method. That get method is now going to return post. If I had run it a minute ago, it would have returned get. Okay, um, so that's good. That's a good start starting point. So now I know that the client is actually trying to send me some data. Next thing to figure out is how does the client add data to the request and how does the server get at it? Okay, so let's go back to the client. Now this is gonna be a little bit interesting. Um, you'll notice that in the constructor for my string request, I see a method, that's the first parameter, or a URL, that's the second parameter. And then I have two callbacks, one that's called if the request completes successfully and a second one that's called on error. I don't have here any way to add data to the request. To do this, what I actually need to do is override one of the built-in string request methods. And to do this, I will, uh, I think it's called get body. There it is, okay. Um, this method is called when the string request is created and it allows me to return a byte array that will be used as the body of the request. Now, a string is not a byte array, but it's very easy to convert to a byte array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, just return um, and then I'll do get bytes. That, that returns a byte array. So now I'm good. So now the client is adding data to the request. It needs to tell the server something. And you can really think of the content of an HTTP request as just being a string. That's how we're going to deal with it. Um, right now, it's just a string string. Eventually, what you're going to want in here is JSON so that 
the client takes an object, serializes it to JSON, puts it in the body of the request. The, the server takes the request, deserializes the body, um, and converts that into an object that can, they can then use. Okay, let's go to the server. So now how do I get this out of the server? So it turns out that these request methods that I, I'm being passed also has a get body. Now this returns a buffer, uh, which won't give us the raw string contents, but there is this method called read UTF-8. And what that will do is it'll interpret the body of the request as a UTF-8 formatted string, that's a common string format, um, and print it. Let's try it. So now again, I'm rerunning the test. Uh, it's going to go through the process, starting up the server. The client will make the request. The client's now adding some information to the body of the request. And what I wanna see on the server is that I can retrieve that. And in fact, I can. Check it out. So the method is post. The string is you are not alone. All right, so to get this a little bit closer to where you need to go uh, for MP2, let me show you a couple things. First of all, it's possible for a client to make both a get and a post request to the same path. And the semantics are different. When I post to a path, I expect something to change. When I get from a path, I expect to retrieve some information. So what we'll do is we'll extend this example to allow us to set a string that is saved on the server through the post request and then get the string uh, if we do a get request to the same path. Okay, so the first thing I need to do, going over to my server, is I need to create, um, and I'll call this the string, great name for a string. Um, and here's what I'm gonna do. Now, this method needs to switch based on the type of, um, the type of request that's being made. So if it's a get request, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, say that everything completed okay, and I'll return the string. And just for fun, just so that this doesn't blow up, I'll initialize this to an empty string because otherwise set body will take null and I think something might go wrong there. So this is a little bit more defensive. Otherwise, I'll say if request.get method dot equals post, I'm gonna change the string. So I'm gonna say the string is equal to request.get body. Oh, sorry, get body, where'd you go? Dot uh, read UTF-8. Good. And then if I want to, I could, I could put in another thing in here, but to handle invalid requests, but that's okay. There are other types of requests uh, in, in, in the HTTP protocol. There's actually quite a few. Uh, get and post are by far the most common. Uh, okay. Uh, and, and now the question is, what should I return from my post? With the get, I'm returning the information. For now, I'll just return a, a, an empty 200. So this in, indicates that um, that things were not done. Okay, otherwise, I'll, I'll return a bad request. So if I fall through this if else, it means that the client didn't make either a get or a post. And in that case, I'll assume that it's making a request that I don't support for this path and I'll, and I'll return the uh, bad request. Okay, now I need to make a couple changes. First of all, I need to, uh, I'm gonna call this, uh, I'm gonna rename this method. I'm gonna call it set string. I'm gonna have it take a string as an argument, a non-null string, uh, non-null string, the string. And what I'll do is instead in the body of this, rather than this hard-coded string, I'll use the string, the string dot get bytes. So now this allows me to tell the server that I want it to save a string. It's gonna do this by making a post request to that path where the body contains the string that I want to save. The server is going to respond to this by pulling the string out of the request and saving it into this variable. Sounds simple enough. Now to test this, I need a way to also get the string. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new method called getString. GetString does not take a string parameter. Uh, it does a test, it uses Sorry, it, it uses the same path. It does a get. I don't get to change the body because I'm doing a get request or the server's not gonna expect a body. And um, this is how things should work. Now, the, now the question is, well, you know, how do, uh, how, how do I know that this worked? Um, what we need to do is we need to change our callback so that the callback returns the string. Um, 
Now, what I'll do here in the set string method is I'll have it return response dot to string because the response should be the string that I asked for. Up here, uh, sorry, that's set string. Sorry. Um, in set string, what I'll have it do is I'll just have it return the string. Um, right? Okay. Now in get string, I'll have it return the response. Uh, and, and, and the reason for this is when I do a post, I expect an empty response. And so uh, in order to get the callback to work, I'll just have it uh, pass back the string that was passed to the post method. We'll see how to change this in just a sec. With a get, the server is actually putting the string into the body of the response. And so I'm going to pull it out and, and send it back. Now I'm going to go over to my test method. And now I've got uh, a little bit more fun here uh, because I'm actually going to get a string as a parameter. And you'll see that uh, it's going to return back the string. Um, and then I also need to set a string to, to, to try. Now, let's run this. OK, so, so now what is this doing? So now this is using this new set string method I just modified to set the string on the server. And it expects that the string it gets back is actually test. Let's see if this works. As soon as this works, what we're going to do is we're going to then add a get request next to make sure that it pulls back the same string that we just set. And again, awesome. OK, so now, now these completable futures actually need to create a new one for every example. So I'm going to cut this code. And now I'm going to say I'm going to call this second string. And I'm going to, now I'm going to do a get string request. So this uses get. Set string uses post. This uses get. Um, but it should still work the same way. Um, and it should now return test because I've set the string to return test. So let's try this. I'll run the test again. So now my client is first making a post to change the string. And then it's making a get to confirm that the string has been changed in the way that we expected. Uh, and hopefully this succeeds. Sweet. Cool. OK. Now, one. One last thing. So now we're at the point where you can see how to kind of, you know, uh, how to change things on the server, right? So that's what post requests do. Post requests are expected to change state on the server. Um, now we have this cool system where if the server were running on another machine, you can actually, and this is what happens, like when you, you know, order food online, like you hit a button and state changes on some server at whatever company you're buying food from. And that server now knows that there's an order that's supposed to be prepared and these are the ingredients and it's supposed to go out to some place, right? The semantics of post is that it changes something. Something about the world changes when we make a post request. In this case, it allows us to change that string. Kind of, you know, a silly example, but your job for MP2 will be to extend this so that you can actually save course ratings uh, provided by different clients. Okay, um, last thing I wanna do here is talk a little bit about the, more about the semantics of post. So what we're doing right now is the response from our post is this empty 200. What frequently, what, a, what the server frequently does in respond to a post is it actually responds with what's called a redirect. So it tells the client, after you do the post, you should load this other URL. And the client will actually do a get on that other URL. So let's, let's get that to work because this is going to be required for your, for your code to pass our test suites. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, you know, after uh, we issue a post, we're going to change the string. So that's what we're doing on line 61 here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say return a new mock response. And we're going to say set response code. And that's going to be uh, moved. Uh, let's see, it's HTTP URL connection dot moved temporarily. That's called a 302. And then I need to tell what the, the client what the new path it should use. And the way we do this is we use something called a header. This is not something I want to get uh, into too much in detail about. But what we, what we set here is we set this location field in the header that tells the client where to go next. So this is kind of like a bounce or something. It says, OK, well, you're done posting. What should I do next? You should get this URL. And so what we're doing is we're telling it to uh, to the next thing to do is to get this URL test. So let's see if this works. Now, now the result of this, well, first of all, let's, let's run the code and see the pattern of requests that emerges. Uh, because what we should see is we should see a post followed by a get followed by another get because the first post went through and then 
it, we were told to do a get, and then we did another get. And so you'll see exactly what that's exactly what happens. So this get and head are being done before our test runs. So you'll see a post that was our first post. Then you see it and it responded with this redirection. The next thing is a get to that same URL that responded with the 200 and then we did another get. And so now what we can do is we can go to our, uh, cat is joining me. Uh, we can go to our client. She's trying to learn. She does actually look at the screen while I'm, while I'm working. You're sitting a little too close though. You should back up a little bit. It'd be hard to see everything. Um, so let's go and look at the, uh, let me make this a little smaller. Let's go and look at the client um, and see how that's working. So right now you'll see that the client, and, and here's the thing to understand. Volley, we've set up Volley, Android and networking client to do this automatically. So when you make a post request, if the server responds with a redirect, Volley will automatically follow it, meaning that it'll perform the next get. So you'll see, we only did one call to get string, but we saw two get requests in the logs. The first one happened in set string after it was finished with the post. So uh, as a result, what we should get back is we should actually get back the string in the response. And so let me run this one more time to test it. Uh, and then we'll talk through exactly what's happening here. Uh, Cause I know this has probably gotten, gone, you know, relatively uh, quickly and this may have gotten a little bit confusing. Okay. And I'll, and I'll use the logs here to try to guide us through. Okay. So let's look at the test code and we'll look at what happened. So the first thing is I ran this set string method. Okay, let's go over to the client. What did set string do? Set string made a post request to this URL test. And in the body of the request, it included the string that we passed to the method. So the string test was uh, posted to the server. Initially, we ran the dispatch method and that took us into, the, into this post method. Now, the post method is doing two different things depending on whether the request is a post or a get. If it's a get, it just returns the string that was saved. The first time we called this, we would get an empty string. And actually, if, you, if we wanted to, we could put uh, an, another part of our test to make sure that that's the case. But the first thing we did in our test, we did, the, we did this post. And so the method is post, we change the string, and then we, re we return this redirection. And you'll see that down here in the logs. Volley followed that redirection automatically. So before the response callback was called, Volley then did an HTTP get for the redirected path, which in this case was the same path test. We told it the path to use in the server by setting this header in the response. So we said, okay, uh, you're done with the post, but you're not done yet. Go to this URL to retrieve some additional information. So it did a get. That get came in here. That set the body of the response to be the string. And that is what was passed to the client. So that's all happened in that one request to set string. Then we tested to make sure it was equal to test, and it was. Next thing we did is we issued the, uh, the get string. Get string made a get request. So again, sorry, uh, get strings down here. It made a get request. That get request came straight into this branch of the if statement inside test, test post, which set the body to the string. Now, when the server started, the string was empty, but then we changed it using the post method. So it was now test, test is returned, and uh, we checked in the test feed. So this gives you an example. And again, this is good skeleton code for starting MP2. There's quite a bit more work that you have to do because you're going to have to, to, to extract more information. You're going to have to do some serialization of the contents. You're going to have to extract that on the server. You're going to have to, you're not just saving one piece of information. You're actually saving uh, a rating for every client for every course. So you're going to have to figure out how to structure that information. Um, so, but this is a, a reasonable starting point for thinking about how to use this new feature of the HTTP protocol that, you're, that you'll need to use to complete this part of the MP.